Pastor Jen. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, Pastor Jen, Pastor Evan. Welcome to worship. Well, last week we decided that today would be declared Ugly Christmas Sweater Sunday. So since you can't see ours, we might as well show them off. Yeah, yeah. Cece yeah. got this one living. for 25 cents. <laughs> I'll tell you I why, because it's a party shirt. Mine matches really well with my stole. Go Jesus, it's your birthday. <laughs> it's your birthday. Go Jesus, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet though. But Not yet. We're just, yeah, yeah. We're just in anticipation. <laughs> we are, we're excited. <laughs> yes, also today, Sunday, if you're watching this on Sunday, you can join Pastor Jen and I for drive-through communion in the parking lot from 11 to one. Um, you'll also want to check out our website below for upcoming events and to sign up for drive-in Christmas Eve worship. But my friends, today is also the second Sunday of Advent. 
And Advent is a time of getting ready for and being awake to the presence of God in our lives and in our world. And we are grateful for our time together here and now in worship with you. There's a theologian, which is a person who thinks about God named Bonhoeffer. And he said, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor or imperfect, and who look forward to something great to come. So in today's story from the Bible, the writer Joel is taking us to prophet school to learn how to turn our hearts over to God. And he's going to take us through it step by step. One of our practices for the season of Advent is to light our Advent wreath. Each week we'll be lighting another candle as we prepare for that peace that is to come. Today, the Cortese family has volunteered to lead us through lighting the first and second candles of the wreath. So worship begins, let's take a moment wherever you are to prepare and welcome the presence of God. We're gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O Emmanuel, prepare, prepare us for, for your coming. coming. We gather together to get ready for what? Only heaven knows. O Emmanuel, prepare, prepare us for your coming. coming. We wait for the day when God will create a prevailing peace on the earth and natural-born enemies turn into newborn friends. O Emmanuel, prepare, prepare us for your coming. We get ready for God to come close by laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all our mixed motives. O Emmanuel, prepare, prepare us for your coming. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles whose flames bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. With you. See you. 
Lord be with you. And, and also I'll with you. you. Let us pray. Oh God, our creator, your kindness has brought us the gift of a new morning. Help us to leave yesterday, not wish for tomorrow, but accept the uniqueness of today. By your love, seen through your son, pour out your spirit on us and take from us whatever we need to carry no longer so that we may be free again to give you our whole hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joel. Listen for the word of God. Our, our ears, ears are, are open. open. Yet yeah, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions even on the male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who was, and who is yet to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're in the second week of Advent where we are practicing hope and waiting for renewal and being on the lookout for God's goodness come down to us right here, right now, bringing us peace. And so today we turn to another ancient writing of the Bible from the book of Joel. The prophet Joel takes us to school to help us learn a formula to guide us during times of difficulty. He takes us through the three R's, this ancient practice that can be practiced by modern people. The three R's that help to cultivate a hope-filled heart, return, rend, renewal. But before we get into these ancient practices that can help us, I want to talk to you about the reason why we need these ancient practices in the first place. And to do that, I need to talk to you about the point of no return. The point of no return is a phrase originally used with airline pilots. It's to talk about that point in the flight pattern where airline pilots can no longer turn back because they simply won't have enough gas to get back to the starting point. But we also use this phrase, the point of no return, in our common language. It's used to describe when you are in the thick of things, the messy middle of things. Let me give you an example. So this past summer, my family and I were heading back into civilization after a week of camping on the boundary waters in northeastern Minnesota, there on the boundaries between the United States and Canada. So when you camp in the boundary waters, you are not glamping, you are not car camping, you are taking everything that you need for the week with you in a canoe and you are traveling from lake to lake to get to your campsite. Here's a picture of us in our canoe with all the things that we needed for the week. Our food, our gear, our personal items, everything in that canoe we would carry with us as we traveled across a few lakes to get to our destination. And then in between the lakes, we would take all the stuff out of the canoe and take those things and our canoe across these paths to get to the next lake. Those paths between the lake are called portages. And yes, this is my idea of a great vacation. 
So here's something that we noticed on the way into the Boundary Waters to find the most fabulous campsite in the universe. The portages were mostly downhill on the way to the campsite, but funny thing about hills, when you're traveling in one direction, it's all downhill, but when you turn around and come back in the opposite direction, it's not. There was one portage in particular that we were dreading. And here's a picture of that portage. I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, what's the big deal? Might I remind you of the big deal? Look at all this stuff in our canoe. That's the big deal because each of these backpacks weighed at least 30 to 70 pounds. But we have somewhere to be. Our outfitter was gonna meet us at the entry point and we had to get there when we said we were gonna get there. And there's this impending storm that's coming on us and we have to get across the lake because you don't wanna be on a lake during a thunderstorm. And so as we come and paddle up to the entry point of the particular portage that we were dreading, Chris steps out of the canoe into the water and he turns his foot on a rock. But don't worry, I volunteered to take his pack which was the heaviest one. And Chris looks at me and he says to me with a little bit of dubiousness in his voice, are you sure you want to do that? It's a very steep portage. But, you know, I am often unaware of my own limits. So I said to Chris, ah, I made a tough stuff. I'm sure I can do it. And so the backpack gets placed on my back and up the hill I go with the heaviest pack on my back and I just start walking. And that's how I found myself stuck at the point of no return. Here, I drew you a picture of the event since at that point, I was not taking pictures. So when I started out, I felt very strong. I was kind of proud of myself going up all those rocks and heading step by step to the top of the hill. But then something started to happen. I noticed that my chest began to heave from breathing so hard and I had to loosen the stability cord around my chest so I could take deeper breaths. And then I could start hearing the blood pulsing in my head and my legs started to burn. And I worried that I might lose my balance and roll down the hill again. And I thought, man, how long is this portage anyway? And I take a look up ahead to see how far Cece is ahead of me, to see how far I needed to go and my heart just sank. Too far, I thought. It's too far, and I can't even call it. I'm too far to turn back, but I don't know how I'm gonna get to the top. I'm stuck right in the middle, the part where enduring gets more difficult, the messy middle, that point of no return. Today, the prophet Joel speaks these words to us. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Then afterward, says your God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions even on the male and female slaves. In those days, says God, I will pour out my spirit. You know, we don't know much about the prophet Joel. We don't know exactly who he was or how he got to be a prophet, but what we do know is that he was a spiritual leader who wrote to a people during a time when they were plagued with something that felt completely out of their control. In this instance, it was a locust infestation on top of a drought that they were already trying to deal with. But really, it could have been anything that makes you feel like you're halfway up the middle of a hill with a heavy load to bear. Grief or poverty, racism, addiction, wayward souls and hate, rampant hunger, broken families, injustice, a disease. 
those things that you experience as a person of faith and wonder, well, how are we going to claw our ways out of this one? How am I going to carry all of these things when it's already so very hard? You know, the people of God during Joel's time were at the proverbial point of no return. And that's right where Joel meets them. When they are weary from carrying their heavy loads. And so he uses ancient words of wisdom to interpret the time that they are in and takes the people to prophet school. And he creates a lesson plan out of the greatest hits of the Bible. And he schools them in the three R's of the ancient ways, return, rend, and renewal. Not so they can buck up and get on with it, but so they can unload all that baggage that they've been carrying all along. Times change, eons come and go, but humans have always had a knack for carrying around baggage and getting caught in the messy middle of things. And I wonder, I wonder, if the prophet Joel were to meet us on the weary road today and take us to prophet school, what might we learn from what he would tell us to do? Um, hey. Hey, Joel. Uh, that uh, kind of looks like a heavy load. It is. It's take, very heavy. How about taking a breath? I don't have time to take a breath. Seriously? I got things to do. Just gotta go. Take, take right, a Joel. breath. Might help. Getting the sense in my own life and as I speak with some of you that not creating a space to feed our spiritual selves is in fact creating a vacuum that's getting filled with things that aren't good for us. So when we go and we go and we go, we aren't able to realize what it is that we really hope for or really need. You know, Thomas Merton, who was a theologian who thought a lot about who God was and who we were as humans said this, he said, there is a pervasive form of contemporary violence to which the idealist most easily succumbs. Activism and overwork. The rush and pressure of modern life are a form, perhaps the most common form, of its innate violence. To allow oneself to be carried away by a multitude of conflicting concerns, to surrender to too many demands, to commit oneself to too many projects, to want to help everyone in everything is to succumb to violence. The frenzy of our activism neutralizes our work for peace. It destroys our own inner capacity for peace. It destroys the fruitfulness of our own work because it kills the root of inner wisdom, which makes work fruitful. So I'm wondering, what if we took Joel's words to heart and took time to return to God? Where is it that you need to take a breath to come home to the heart of God? Maybe it could look like this. Uh, hey. hey, Joel. Hey, Joel. Hey, Jen. Joel, it's getting harder. I would imagine. I think I'm going to yeah. stop. I think, I think it's time to stop and just take a breath. Yeah. Oh, my good. gosh. Okay, let's just do that. Good. Let's good. just take yeah. a moment. Oh, my gosh. This is... So heavy. Uh, I yeah. can't even tell you how what, long I've been carrying what, what this around. You, what you got in there? It's um, nuts. I, what do you have? You know, it's okay. It's it's not that heavy. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll we'll just leave it right there for now. Let's just stop. So the prophet Joel says to us to rend our heart and not our clothing. That's a fancy prophet way of saying, when you return to God, don't forget to be honest. The hard thing is, is that when you're in the middle mess of things, when things are hard, it's really difficult to take a look inside because we don't want to unveil those things that make us vulnerable. It's actually part of the reason why we don't like stopping and being still because then it's so quiet we might actually hear what's wrong with our hearts and that is very uncomfortable. 
our hearts are always God's, but they're also ours, which means they're human hearts that carry around a lot of baggage, like judgment or expectations or hurt or fear. We humans tend to hold on to things that aren't meant for us to hang on to. And so we have to practice letting go so that we can practice lightening our load. And that's why the prophet is inviting us to rend our hearts, to take that inner inventory about what's going on inside and to be honest about what's in there so God can help us. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, that's it's a heavy, a heavy back. backpack. Yeah. It's you a heavy load to bear. Yeah, it is. You ready to take I, a look? I mean, yeah, it might help. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, let's, let's just take, take a, a little gander inside, see what, what we are you got here. What baggage you, you never got? know. <laughs> oh, you oh got here's some a biggie. <laughs> this oh. is heavy. Feel how heavy that is. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah, let's just Not put that down. Yeah, we don't need that, do we? Uh, that's some judgment oh, there. A, there's another one. I always have a lot of these. I love these. Oh, plans. Plans. I have them, but sometimes uh, I might. You know, I don't need them all. Uh, no. Yeah, you yeah, you can plan. I don't need to like carry just around. Cool. I mean, just refer to them every once in a while. It's, oh, there's some more. Too many plans. <laughs> Who do I have this much stuff in my backpack? Expectations. You know, always okay, but you know, they can get heavy if you hang on to them too tight, you know? Yeah, maybe. Um, there's what, another what one in here. In is. This is a big one. I hope I can get rid of this one. I can't wait. Oh, Man, I've been carrying this around all year. <laughs> oh, yeah, 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to get rid of this one. You can't. I'm sorry. Not You're yet? Okay, a little bit of reality yeah, check. All right, you got to carry one. some stuff, I guess. Please, for a couple months. Not in control of it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. There you are, 2020. Wait, what's in this? There. I didn't even know I had other... Hidden pockets you, you don't even know what you're carrying, do you? No, I don't. Oh. What, what, what do you got? Oh. Maybe a little worry. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll probably just carry that around for a little bit. Is that all right with you? If, if that's what you need well, to do. Well, maybe not. Oh, I'm going to think about that one. Yeah. All right. So if you're a person who's grieving or you're in a reality of a very difficult situation, you sometimes don't have a choice and you can't just let go and it's not time yet, but God will wait for you. But still we're being invited in this to accept this time of renewal. We still need time to stop. We still need time to breathe because when we stop and when we breathe, those things that we really hope for, really need these things that the world really needs it comes to the surface and that's where god meets us but the strange thing is is that we keep resisting it we keep trying again and again to do it all on our own as if we were the only ones in the world who could carry the load as if we were the only ones in the world who have difficulty letting go or the only ones in the world who have ever been through something messy before and there's no way out Okay, on your advice, uh, I've returned to God. I've been honest about what I got here, and I've Good. just kind of left it all there for Lay now. I'm sure I'll come by and pick it back up. Yeah. So I just Lay got this down. big old 20, yeah. um, 20 well, thing. Here, you want I got to it. Look, I got come it. Come on, let me just... I can, I can do it by me. myself. Stop it. Leave me it alone. Leave me alone. All right. You got it. We want to carry it all on our own because we don't want others to see what's going on inside here. Or we don't want others to see how poorly we carry our loads to bear. And I don't know why we do this to ourselves, but we do. But I do know what God is going to do about it. I think this is the message of Joel. I think Joel is trying to say to us, hey, hey there. <laughs> There is darkness in this world, to be sure. There are devastating things that you cannot understand, and it feels scary, and it feels out of control, and it makes us want to circle the wagons. That is true, but also in this world, there are other things that are true. There is God's Spirit unleashed, and it is good, and it is larger than despair. It is the Spirit of God in you for you, all of you, you young ones, you old ones, those who feel bound and those who feel free. 
God wants to offer this weary world a way out. And none of us, none of us are meant to do this alone. God will never leave us alone, even when we mess up, because God grades on a curve. And God gives us one another. God made us for each other. We are meant to uphold one another. So on your advice, you know, I've decided to return some of this to God, go take, ahead, a, take go a breath, ahead. take inventory, see what I can leave here and get go that go ahead, go ahead, dumb 2020 brick in here. Uh, now I'm gonna sling it on and keep yeah. going, Joel. Boy, yeah. it's been good to have you around. So I'll tell you. Here, can I give you a hand? Uh, and tell yeah, me? yeah, why don't you just give yeah. me a hand? That would just be yeah. easier. Let's just do this together, hand. man. Cause there you Nobody go. needs to do this by themselves, right? Yeah, you got it. I'm right by you. All, all right. right. All right, Joel. Hey, you dude. You got this. Thank you. Hey. All right. Anytime. See ya. See you around. That's what the body of Christ does for one another. That's where peace meets us. Not necessarily in a change of circumstances, but in a change of how we carry our circumstances together. Being honest about what we long for or yearn for. Being hope-filled about what will and can be. Coming to us to dream dreams and visions that are before us. Renewal is coming back to the community of God. It's where we learn perseverance and endurance. It's where we are supported by other people of faith to help carry what we have to carry. And I hope, oh I hope, in this Advent, that you let God's spirit of community pour courage into your heart so you can have peace even now. Because God's peace is looking to land in this weary world and your heart, your heart is the perfect place for it. Amen. open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need.
faithful God, you teach us to return to you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern how to love as you love. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us towards a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Sustain them in these days and give them moments of renewal and rest. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also you. with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks for the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave, blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Have a safe week. <laughs>